It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Mindswell. Welcome. My name is Abu Kao Beauty, and always great to be back here with you. It's a very wet day here in Lagos. Hope it's a little warmer wherever you are watching us from. Yeah, we're going to be kicking off the show as usual. Um, a lot has happened in Nigeria in the past week. I always say a week in Nigeria is like a lifetime anywhere else. But I think the one thing that has stood out for a lot of people is the inflation figures that were released by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, um, over 18%. Uh, inflation and um, the not so uh, impressive news on top of that scary news already is the fact that that things might even get worse than that. Um, where do we go from here? What does this hold for the Nigerian economy? Uh, what should the Central Bank of Nigeria or the Ministry of Finance be doing at this point? What should the President and of course state governors be thinking about shoring up uh, the economy? I have here with me Mukhtar Mohamed. Thanks for being here today. Scary times. And uh, for a country where so many scary things happen very often, this particular one seems very grim. Um, what's going on? Well, what's going on? Uh, we, we must say it's not that it starts from this um, administration uh, because uh, we've had those challenges when you don't do the basic, like they would say, when the foundation is faulty, what can you do? So we have a very faulty foundation. We run a monotonous economy that depends on only one uh, commodity to bring in foreign exchange. So when you have that and then we, we import over 90% of what we use in this country, um, you just need to look at even the average Nigerian, just look at him and you see whatever he's using is, is almost all imported inside this, uh, out of the country. So uh, we, we continue to have those challenge. Then we have a very, a very volatile exchange um, Ray that is giving people a lot of problem because we are we are importing a lot of things. Then again, basic things that we're able to provide for ourselves we cannot provide. The most basic that touch every Nigeria is in the area of the petroleum product that we cannot even be. We don't even refine it here, so we have a challenge. And when you look at that, generality of Nigerians are involved in that. A lot of forex goes into that. We come with a lot of names for them. NNPC call it um, under recovery. Federal government call it a uh, subsidy scheme. A lot of them. So we we'll continue to have those challenges. As long as we're an economy that depends on importation, once there is volatility on that space, inflation will just definitely have to come up. Once the exchange rate and the dollar is not the same, it started from 360 before the pandemic, then after the pandemic, we've gone as, as high as 480. So definitely, that is the major cause of um, inflation. You, you adduce it to a lot of things, oh, farmers, end men crisis, um, shutting down through the pandemic. Yes, all those are there. But the major um, challenge that we have is the exchange rate. But I mean, you say don't blame the government. Of course, a lot of people would look at the government. They were voted in for a reason. They are going into their seventh year in office as we speak. And one of the things they had, you know, pledged to Nigerians was the diversification of this economy. Um, is six years too short for that to have happened? We've also, you've talked a lot about, you know, importation of goods. We've seen so many bans in this government, closing of borders, banning of certain goods being imported into the country, all of this. And we're still talking about the fact that we're so import dependent. So what are they doing wrong policy-wise? And the policy wise, they are doing everything wrong. And when you talk about, you just made mention of something banding, I mean, closing of the border, banding of social, social um, some um, goods that you don't want in Nigeria. Remember, even of recent, when the, our own Director General of the World Trade Organization came up, he picked up that issue with the Nigerian government in the area of um, free trade. So we are not having free trade because we don't have, we are, we, the world has become a global business, so a global village, so we need to have free trade within ourselves. When you ban some product, you are telling them they cannot come into your own country. They, Nigeria, will tell you that we are using that to safeguard our own industry. But it's neither here nor there. Now, the challenge is, like I said, is when you shut the border, we, are you able to meet up with the demand of your people? Price, price doesn't have to come by shutting the border by controlling prices. Everything in, in economic terms works by demand and supply. Once demand is much and supply is low, the price will go high. Once supply is high, demand is low, then the price will come down. So it has to do with, the, there's a fundamental. So if you go against the fundamental, it will know. What I'm saying that the government are trying to say they are diversifying, but sometimes we play lip service. Let me tell you, because the only time you hear about diversification, if you've studied it very well, is when we are in recession, when oil price goes down, then you hear diversification, diversification. Oh, there's an election. Yeah, then after, <laughs> Oil price has stabilized, come up, you don't hear anything again, we go back to our normal self. We depend on that, that black gold that brings us cheap money because we don't refine it. And then we do the filibuttal federalism, state, local government, everybody, let's go and share what we have. So 
Definitely, if we keep on doing that, we won't go, get anywhere. Now, when you talk of diversification, we talk about what we call competitive advantage. As a nation, what is our competitive advantage in agriculture? You don't just diversify. You want to be the number one in rice production. You want to be the number one in sugarcane production. You want to be the number one in wheat production. It doesn't work like that. When you talk of that, if I say cocoa, who will say Ghana? Abricus. That is their strength. We need to look at our strength. We don't just diversify holistically. Everybody wants to diversify. They want to make food sufficiency. Let's keep one area. Then when we stabilize in that area, we can move into other areas. So diversification itself is good, but we are not doing it rightly. We are thinking of diversifying almost every sector. Of your and the challenge is, like I keep saying, it's like a man. You are earning an income. Your main stream of income is what you use to build other streams of income. Once your mainstream of income is affected, you cannot build other stream of income. So Nigeria's mainstream of income is oil. The only time we think of diversification is when oil is down, and then our revenue is down. So how do you diversify? That's the lift service. Let's, let's um, go to Abuja. I think I'll be joined by Irene Ubani, who's a journalist. Um, Irene, if you can hear me, um, these are, of course, not very, very happy times uh, for Nigeria with regards to the economy. But um, there's been a lot of people who've defended this, uh, talking about the fact that there's been a pandemic, and most economies across the world uh, are going through these same sort of issues with regards to you know, a downturn in their, in their um, growth numbers. But... Um, 18% is pretty high, and I'm sure not very many countries are uh, that bad, even with the pandemic hitting them. What have we done wrong? All right, thank you so much, Ibuka, for having me on um, your show this afternoon. Uh, but firstly, I used to be Irene Ubani, now I'm Irene David Arinze because I just got married. All right, so regarding um, you know, the conversation around the fact that we are having um, the inflation rate going very high, I like to be as practical as possible. And so I came here with the Naira and you know, the dollar, if you can zoom into this. What does this simply mean for us? Now, when you talk about inflation, when you went to the market in December, what you were able to purchase at exactly the same volume, is that exactly the same thing you can purchase with a thousand Naira when you go back to the market in April? If you are purchasing less than what you usually purchase with this Naira note, then you should understand that the inflation rate is going high. And depending on the quantity you are able to get. I'm talking about the dollar as well. Can you purchase what you purchased in December last year, the same quantity as what you purchased in April this year? Now, that's the difference. What's the difference between these two currencies I'm holding? We're talking about industrialization. We're talking about your ability to export as, as against importing. One country is more of an import-dependent nation, and the other is more of an export-dependent nation. With Nigeria's population, ideally, it should be an added advantage if we were producing more than we consume. If we have focused more on you know, manufacturing, if we focus more on ensuring that our policies are in tandem with what would make our environment a more enabling business environment for business um, you know, people. Because now I start to think about the multinationals that have actually folded up and have left the country because this environment is not conducive enough for them. A country that is divided against itself would not stand. The North, in my opinion, can produce virtually everything that we need in terms of food supply. And then when we see that our food supply in terms of inflation is even going higher. Three weeks ago, a basket of tomato was about 7,000 naira. Now it's going for 16,000 naira. Could it be that we are not producing enough? No. But then we're having insurgents. So when you start to talk about the fact that, oh, inflation rate is high, what can the CBN do? CBN cannot do everything, when, particularly when insecurity challenges have really not been figured out and sorted out as it were. So we really cannot work in isolation or in silos right now. The CBN needs to work with the security forces. We need to work with the regulatory agencies to ensure that every single thing is holistic. And then, then you can really start to see a result in terms of reduction in inflation and going towards, let's say, a one-digit um, one rate in terms of inflation rate. Because our growth rate is at one per is, is, is below 1%, and then we're having inflation rates at a double digit above 18% um, 18, 18 right now. That's, that's a time bomb for Nigeria, I must say.
So, what, what you, I mean, I think everybody understands that, you know, the insecurity that's sort of plaguing the entire country can be directly linked, you know, to the food inflation numbers that we're seeing. But the central bank has recently come out, you know, they put out a tweet recently saying sugar and wheat are going to go into a uh, foreign exchange restriction list. We must work together to produce these items in Nigeria instead of continuing to import them. You know, there seems to be a deliberate uh, sort of effort by government constantly that we've seen in the last six years to make sure that, you know, we are not dependent on imports, trying to sort of force local production of things. It doesn't seem to have worked a lot. What do you think this time it's going to yield with sugar and wheat and sort of policies like that? All right, to be honest, some people may, so, some people may disagree with me, but I believe that that was a good you know, move by the CBN. However, the timing for me was wrong. And like the analyst in the studio in Lagos rightly said, you don't have to wait until the um, price of um, crude oil has gone down before you start to regulate if we need to import sugar and wheat or not. You don't learn to be a president of a country, for example, when you've been elected the president. It's something you start to learn way, way long time before that time. So that whenever, you know, situations and all of that come, you are ready, you are prepared. So it's not, it's not like Nigeria can really not produce its wheat or sugar. But then the question now is, is this the right timing? When inflation is at 18.17%, I don't think so. So while DCBN has a point in terms of, oh, you, we really need to start producing these things internally. Is the timing right? Absolutely not. But I feel maybe this is just, you know, one pain that Nigerians will have to go through for the interim in order to, you know, get really out of this um, situation of inflation rise. Because it's going to keep increasing until we start to produce what we consume. Because, I mean, if we do not produce what we consume, what will happen is we are putting more pressure on our Naira, the, the, the value of dollar which we have in scarce commodity right now in, terms, in Nigeria will keep increasing and then we're, we're, we're giving more jobs and employment to people outside the country and we're stifling ourselves of what our people should be benefiting from. All right, let me come back to you now, Mukhtar, because something I said at the top of the show, which I don't know if you agree with, is that a lot of people who have seen these numbers are saying, oh, it's even going to get worse than this. 2020 was a tough year for Nigeria with regards to the pandemic. People lost people, but the economy was completely bamboozled. We went into a recession, barely have come out of it. Inflation numbers are skyrocketing. The Naira is in a free fall, and it's going to get worse? Yeah, it's going to get worse. Yeah, it's going to get worse in the sense, maybe in the short term, it's going to get worse. It get worse in the long term if we don't do what we have to do. And unfortunately, whatever we achieve in economic stability now, has just been due to only the monetary side, which the CBN is doing. The physical side that have to come from government is not working at all. That's why you're seeing in terms of, you see, they'll say economic growth, we had a growth of so, so, so because of the monetary policies. But when you look at the, the one, you look at the physical policies in the area of job creation, and you see that the job creation uh, rate is it, it's, it's alarming. So CBN alone has been trying to carry the economy. And they're even getting themselves into, into sector. They are not so directly involved into sector that is not supposed to be their duty, like um, textile sector, even like in the rice sector, direct intervention from, from the CBN, which every economy will tell you that that is not the right thing to do. But every economy can decide to, to, to do what it thinks suits its own economy, any country. Now, yes, it's going to get worse. The only way that it's not going to go worse is because the price of crude was pegged at $40 per barrel. Now we're doing about $60 per barrel. Now we have a differential of about $20, $20 or thereabout. So now what happened to that $20? What do we do with that $20? We determine whether this inflation is going to be short-lived or we continue to see it like that now. Are we going to build a reserve that will begin to uh, take care of the shock when it comes to it? That is the difference between the global meltdown that we have during the time of President Lucha Gobasanjo and what we currently have. What is the difference? The difference that we have a robust reserve that was built in the name of excess crude account. So government could go there and borrow. Government could go there and borrow because this, this idea of packing, pegging oil price at a particular fee was brought about by the then Minister of Finance, who is now the DG of the World Trade Organization, Ngozi Kujiwala. He said, look, you can't just be eating oil, you have less savings. Then when it became a challenge with the governors, they decided to say, let's, let's create a, what they call, what, what they call a sovereign wealth fund, which is developed by every economy that is into crude oil. By virtue of that, you save a certain percentage of your money, and you use that 
percentage of your money to diversify into other areas. That's what happened in UAE. But unfortunately for us as a nation, we are not doing that. So if we decide to do that, we are able to build a reserve. We are able to do, come up with the right policy. Now, the right policy has to do with what do your people need, not what you think the World Bank or the IMF is telling you. That has been the challenge. Remember when Bill Gates came to this nation, he said, look, you build a robust economic recovery growth plan, but you are not taking concern of your greatest assets, which is your people. Well, you are looking only on your resources, building infrastructure. We are building infrastructure everywhere, building rail lines. We are building, but how many of those infrastructure are being run by Nigerians? So when those infrastructure are not being run by Nigerians, we still go through that cycle of trying to end foreign exchange to pay these expatriates. So what we need to do is to begin to build an economy that is Nigerian dependent. Nigerians can run it, even if for the short term they could not, but for the long term vision is for them to, to be Nigerians to be able to run the economy. But unfortunately, we are not doing that. So a lot of Nigerians have said we've been patient for years. We're now 22nd, I believe. <laughs> I can't even remember now. 22nd year of democracy uh, in this country since 1999. People have waited and waited and waited. There seems to be every time there's a problem, we say, oh, just we, things are going to get better. This, like you said, looks very grim. As much as insecurity is a big, big problem, a lot of people say this might even be worse than what insecurity is posing, because an economy that is in tatters, how do you hold people from you know, just surviving? What do you, do you see any sort of signs from government? I mean, you've said the CBN here seems to give a, a press briefing every other day or something, but do you see the body language from government, from the Ministry of Finance, from the policymakers that says we are ready to tackle this today? Well, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, we see those, la those, those, those um, body um, word from the government. But it's um, like they say, they say actions speak better than words. Sometimes those, uh, what government is saying is just word. Then match it up with action. We, we are not seeing those actions. Uh, you need to look at the pandemic. They say there was a lot of intervention. Government is uh, intervening in key sectors. And at the end of the day, those key sectors are still going down. And then they tie down to oh, weak infrastructure, weak structure. So you, 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 could, you could say the body language. The body language in, is not enough alone. We need to see actions. We need to see that this money is in. Let me give you an instance. What, did, what do we make of trade up money to, to do? How many, how many companies or how many industries, how many SMEs have grown as a result of the 5,000 5, naira, 10,000 10, naira that we're busy training around? So nobody talks about trade that money. Again, it, it didn't make any sense for us. Yeah. So when we have scarce resources, all you need to do, you don't just throw money to your problem. You need to sit down and look at your problem and holistically and say, look, what do we do? And not just what do we do, what are we doing? And what are we not doing well? Nigeria is not diverse of document of doing well, but we are always having a challenge of imp 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 implementation. Look at our budget. We've never achieved up to 60% implementation in our budget. So that doesn't I mean, mean the me, budget is bad, but yeah. it just means implementation. Let me, let me go to Irene. Irene, uh, <laughs> the past week we did have a bit of a, of a uh, sort of argument, if I want to put it lightly, between two governors, the governors of the central bank and Edo State, about you know, printing money to sort of save the economy. The CBN governor has said it was loans. Uh, you print money as loans, and the Edo State governor is raising an alarm. You know, um, and it's caused a lot of uproar for a lot of people, and it's another telling sign of what's to come. The CBN, yes, seems to be doing a lot, but is the government doing enough? Obviously, what, each, what's a random Nigerian on the street would respond to that question is no. You know, because if, for example, the CBN is doing enough, then we should be seeing, you know, a larger percentage of improvement, particularly in terms of our economy. And let's take a look at what happened in Venezuela, you know. When, when a country decides to print money as a, as a way to get itself out of maybe extreme debts and all of that, you are depreciating the value of you know, that currency. When something is in excess supply, when something is in excess supply, I mean, that's just what, you, what will usually happen. So, for example, um, I totally understand the fact that Nigeria is, has a very high debt, you know, repayment, which it needs to start to repay, you know. And then when there's no state government says, governor starts to say that um, we're printing a, a lot of money. It's, it's um, damaging to the Nigerian economy long term. And these are things that we need to really, really start having conversations about. I'm not saying, oh, it's part of the CBN's you know, job to print out money to perform certain transactions. That's not the solution. I gave you an example with you know, the Naira here and then a $100 
note. What's the equivalent of that hundred dollar right now to the naira? Forty-seven thousand naira. You know, in this situation, it's more of the less is more, while more is less in this um, in this case, where you're having a hundred dollar bill, but then it's equivalent to 40, 47,000, 48,000 naira, and then a thousand naira. It's way, way less in, in terms of percentage. So we need to really, really come together and start to have conversations with stakeholders. When you start to have conversations with business owners, when businesses start to thrive, they, they would pay more taxes. Government to have more money to perform more infrastructural developments that they want to perform, you know, and whatever uh, other projects they need to conduct. I'm not creating policies, for example, that are not in tandem with business growth performances. And then you start to see businesses that are closing up. But it's not like it's a dead end and that we don't have solutions to it. But then the point remains that we need to work together in order to get ourselves out of this economic trench that we have found ourselves in today. Well, thank you very much for giving us a bit of hope there with that last line there. Um, what is very grim science for Nigeria. Thank you very much, Mukhtar. Thank you very much, Irene. We're going to take a break now and come back. Please don't go away.